Another topic I would like to discuss with you today is the domain of business model innovation. Now I think you know basically what a business model canvas is. It's a depiction of a business model and it is arranged in a couple of key pieces. Here you see the Unite version of the business model canvas. And I don't want to discuss why exactly in details right now, but just believe me for a second, it's superior. So what you see here is the core business model canvas alongside the key questions you have to ask yourself to fill it out proficiently. Now you can also contextualize that business model. On the top, you now see the drivers. On the right, you see the customers segments and their jobs to be done. At the bottom, you're seeing the team who is executing on it. On the left, you see the outcome, which is hopefully that your new business model is creating an unfair advantage. So here is the business model canvas again, slightly zooming in, and you can more zoom in on the value proposition. We suddenly can see your core customer needs based on jobs to be done, product services, as well as your new understanding of competing solutions. But even from here, you can zoom in. For example, you could zoom in to the elevator pitch. Let's zoom out one more and let's zoom out from the business model canvas. So here is the business model environment canvas. Basically, business models don't live in a vacuum. They live in a competitive context. So here you can break down the competitive context by emerging trends and disruptive forces with which you can analyze your business environment. And once you have done all of those pieces from the, you went from on that beautiful journey from business model to elevator pitch to value proposition to environment canvas, well, you have that draft for your new innovation, you could ask yourself, oh, is that now a promising business model? The business model's core card asks you the 12 most toughest questions on your business model. It's based on analysis of over 600 startups and their failures or their successes. So it asks you, do you have, does your business model offer a lock in effect? Do you have a well-structured cost structure? And is it imitable, for example? Basically, what I want to discuss is, for the first time, the tools are connected. These are just some examples. So here we are seeing the entire business model framework with setting the business model in context. So you can go from anywhere to anywhere. In the center, we see the business model canvas. On the top right, you break it down with a value proposition canvas. You analyze your customer's jobs to be done. Oh, team, suddenly the topic of culture comes into play. How do I structure that team? Or you can go, just one more example, from operating model, from the business model to an operating model, defining your core value stream as well as the supporting activities your organization runs. But I think I promised to talk, at least briefly, about the topic of business model innovation. Now, business model innovation is in principle well understood. We know, for example, how we can earn money. Yeah? That is happening through the revenue model. And how money can be earned has been experimented by millions of organizations over the last hundreds of years. So we know how we can charge money for our products. We equally well understand how we can set up brand or communicate with our customers. So the only thing we had to do is to break those areas down. So we took the operating model blue, just watch the colors, value model uh, yellow, experience model green, etc. Revenue model dark gray and literally map those out. So now you can suddenly see what are the main patterns in each of those areas. And if you want to reinvent your revenue model on the top left, well, you could think about, oh, add on pricing. How about a switch to advertising based pricing 
or a broker or cash up front, I make a flat flat rate of offering towards my customers or I create a false scarcity, premium pricing, subscription pricing, auctioning. Yeah, so here you basically find 90 to 95% of the most important patterns of a business. So when you want to do business model innovation, you basically start defining your business model canvas. Start with the core canvas or the extended business model canvas. And then you define each area as you are today. And then you pick one area, for example, again, the topic of revenue model. You define it how it is today. Then you go for, here is the detail table, including definitions. You look at all your possible alternatives and you see when you make a change in your revenue model, in this case, in this example, whether you have made progress. And then you take that step by step, area by area. So basically business model innovation is a highly structured process that you take and a highly methodological process, which you take step by step, area by area, you look at the alternatives and see whether you have made progress. Business model innovation is the most important, potentially most impactful way of doing innovation and it's unfortunate it is not being used. So we always do product innovation, marketing innovation, but business model innovation is least understood possibly by organizations out there. It has big potential because as you do a couple of steps, as a couple of moves in innovating your business model innovation, at innovating your business model, your business model becomes more defensible. It's tougher to copy. It's more differentiated. So go out and leverage the Unite Business Model Innovation Patterns.